What's going on my friends? For today's watch review, we're taking a look at the Nixon High Tide. Now full disclaimer, this is not gonna be a full review, just a quick overview and a summary of the functions and features. And the reason why is because I have never worn this watch, you know, maybe just for the brief wrist shot, but this watch for all intents and purposes is brand new. I unboxed it, I'm gonna film it, and then I'm gonna put it right back in the box because I specifically bought this watch as a giveaway prize to celebrate 5,000 subscribers. I'm thinking we should hit the 5,000 subscriber mark probably you know, early next week. And then after we get there, I'm gonna wait a couple of weeks um, for people to enter the giveaway. The rules are in the description below. So go ahead and check those out if you want this watch or if you want a chance at winning this watch. And then after a couple of weeks go by and the numbers go up a little bit more, I will do the giveaway winner wheel that I've done before. And then I'll reach out to the winner via direct message on Instagram or Facebook. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Starting off with price, you can find the high tide for around $220. Taking a look at those dimensions, I'm going to have those on the screen for you. Feel free to pause at any time. As you can see, the dimensions here aren't too crazy. It is going to be a little bit on the larger size for those of you more comfortable with your typical G-Shocks. With that being said, let's go ahead and have a side-by-side -side with a G-Shock Square. So here you go. Here is the size difference. So not off by a lot but there is a little bit of a difference. And for those of you familiar with Nixon's, here is a side-by-side -side with the Regulus, of very similar dimensions here. And now going over some general info on the watch. So the overall case is going to be a recycled plastic, um, which I think is great. Fortunately, there still is some metal. So this top bezel portion is stainless steel, as well as the case back and the buckle portion of the strap. As far as hardware goes, you're gonna have four pushers, two on the top, two on the bottom, and a mineral glass crystal. Underneath that crystal, you've got this beautiful MLCD display or memory LCD. For those of you familiar with G-Shocks, you'll know it as the MIP display or memory and pixel. And so as you can see, you've got this beautifully sharp contrast here. And the great thing is, is that MLCD displays use very low amounts of power. So you get a beautifully crisp display with very low power consumption. This is a display that needs to be used more in all digital watches and it's really a shame that it isn't more common and then all the components put together gives you a water resistance of a hundred meters and it is rated for uh, rough and tough use out in the ocean swimming pool you name it so it can handle anything that you throw it at now let's do a quick overview of the features or functions so the mode button is right here this lower left pusher and so pushing that you're going to go to your sun and moon calendar, your chronograph, your timer, and then back to tide. So the tide feature is also your main time. And if you saw me scrolling through the menus, you can see just how fun that display change is. It's almost like a little animation and it adds that just wonderfully fun visual appeal to the watch. In main time mode, you can customize it to cater to your needs. So right now we've got a 50-50 split of main time at the top and then your tide time at the bottom. If you push this upper right pusher right here, you can change it to minimize the main time and then, you know, so it's more like a 75-25 split. And then if you press it again, you can have it showing the tide graph and then one more time to get back to the 50-50 split. So it's just, it's just a great option there. It gives you a little bit of flexibility to show you the information on how you prioritize it. Now going over the other modes, in the moon data mode, this is where it gives you, you know, the status of the moon. And it's great because you can cycle through um, the new moon and full moon information. And then if you leave it alone, it will automatically go back to your current status. For the chronograph mode, um, your lower right pusher right here is going to be your start and stop button, but it's also your reset button, so you just press it again to stop, and then hold it to reset. One thing that I really like about the stopwatch is, let's just say you're timing something, and then you stop it. If you push this upper right pusher right here, 
it will give you more detailed information on your lap time, your split time, and all that stuff. And I just think that's really cool. And then moving on to the timer here, you know, it functions like a timer would. So just like the stopwatch, this is your start and stop pusher, and then push it again or hold it to reset. And there is an audible beeper once the timer has expired. And then now we're back to the main time and tide mode. And one function you will find that is missing is the alarm. For me, that's not a big deal, but it's just something you should be aware of because I know that there are a lot of people that actually utilize the alarm function on their watch. Now let's take a look at that backlight. To access the backlight, you're gonna push this upper left pusher, and I think it's fantastic. It's a very soft white glow, and I think it is effective, and I've got no complaints there. As far as the battery life goes, the manual rates the battery life to last two years. However, in my experience, Nixon watches last far longer than what they are rated for. For example, my Nixon Regulus was also rated for about two to three years, and I have had it for five years now, and it is still running strong. Now taking a look at the strap, I am not a fan of rubber straps, but as far as rubber straps go, you really can't get any better than this. It's soft, supple, feels good, and on the other side, it is cut out to maximize the breathability while you are wearing the watch. Another thing that I really like about it is you can see this little tab right here. So this tab fits in this cutout right here on the keeper, and so that prevents the keeper from moving around all over the place, and I very much like that. And taking a look at the buckle, You've got a stainless steel buckle with Nixon engraved there. So you got a little bit of um, Nixon character engraved into the watch and I think that looks nice. And that pretty much covers the review. Just going over my overall thoughts, I think as far as a superficial opinion goes, it's a fantastic watch. It feels good, the dimensions are great. I really like the overall aesthetics and the star of the show here is that MIP display. It's beautifully sharp. And then the fact that you get those little animations when you're changing through the modes is just a, you know, it's the cherry on top. It's the added benefit that's re not really necessary, but makes it so fun. One thing I really like about this watch, or Nixon in general, is that it's not a G-Shock. I love G-Shocks, but G-Shocks pretty much own the market when it comes to digital watches. And so it's really nice to see a company that provides some diversity in the digital watch field. Variety truly is the spice of life, so I appreciate the fact that Nixon gives you something else to look at. Aside from that, that's pretty much all I gotta say. I hope you enjoyed this very quick overview of a fantastic looking watch, and good luck to all of you that entered into the giveaway. I think it's awesome that we got to this point, and hopefully the channel just continues to grow, and we can continue to share our passion for watches. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.